Okay, so uh, I was saying that uh, today we're going to uh, review okay, uh, your task that uh, I gave you yesterday. I gave you a chapter uh, about classroom discourse, approaches to the investigation, how you can do, uh, study uh, classroom discourse. Uh, so um, the way we're going to proceed is that you prepared okay, PowerPoint presentations about the sections I assigned to each group of you. Okay? So we will start with the first one on transcription, recording, sorry. So recording. Okay. The next one is going to be uh, number two, problems or tra transcription or transcription. We'll go to number three, uh, talking about interaction analysis. Okay. Then number four, uh, which is okay, silence. Am I going on the same? Okay. Please correct me if I'm, I'm not uh, on the right track. Then number four, we talk about discourse analysis approaches. Ad hoc approaches, but you have silence, right? And ad hoc approaches. Okay, so you are going to be one, two. Uh, okay, let me make. Okay, let me correct this. So number three, interaction analysis. Where are you? So you, and then silence. Okay. Anyway, so we will go this way. Not doesn't matter. Okay, we will go this way. So then number four, okay, silence. Number five, it's discourse analysis approaches, okay? And finally, number six, conversational analysis approach, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Okay, so we uh, proceed. Number three. Okay. So the first group. So who's going to be a spokesman or woman? Ahlam. Good morning. Okay, ready? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay, Ahlam, are you okay? No, don't speak. Don't say. Are you ready? Did you? Okay. Because you will come here and present. Okay? So let's come here, okay?
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're doing great today. Okay, uh, our chapter that we are concerned with is about recording, uh, which is presented by uh, Ibrahim Al Omari, Muhammad Aqlouch, uh, Rahma Kafa, and I prepared this uh, presentation for you. Okay, uh, the first the first thing that we uh, have tackled is that a recording uh, in the class. There are four choices that uh, conduct or yeah, that conduct or simply. Uh, Let's conduct uh, our recordings, which are audio recordings, video recordings, observation, and narrative. And first, we're going to see what do we mean by recording. Okay, uh, audio recording is an easiest way to capture spoken interaction. It has to do with verbal uh, spoken interaction, uh, wherein technology is available. So technology here ser serves a very important role uh, in recording to uh, record high quality audio. For example, when we're, talk when we're talking about label <laughs> microphone or multi-directional microphones, etc. Uh, as we have seen that uh, for, each, uh, for each of the choices that I have mentioned, either the audio recordings, the video recordings, the observation and narrative approach, they have some privileges and at the same time they have the uh, difficulties or problems that hinder the process of recording. So the first difficulty here is uh, first background noise. Uh, okay, uh, as we know that when we're trying to record, we may come across with some noises either in the classroom that observers um, have as a deficiency or difficulty while recording. Uh, here as a solution, uh, so as to uh, solve this uh, kind of problem, uh, it's better to choose like having many microphones, not only to focus on one microphone because it's liable, it's highly liable not to record in a way that is truly effective. So uh, it's a good way like to have many microphones to serve uh, the recording. Here we have also video uh, recordings. So we have seen so far audio recordings, we have video recordings. Actually, video recording uh, is highly concerned with uh, visual representation of what we see or what happens in the classroom, okay? So the observer tries to record what's going on in the classroom based on his visual uh, competence or based on visual uh, stuff. And here the requirements for the uh, video recording is we, have, we need actually two cameras, the back and the, the front camera, okay? Uh, and uh, these two cameras, they record all the interactions taking place, especially if supplemented other digital recorders. Here, as we have seen so far, that for each uh, principle or component, uh, we come across some of the problems. And the, pro the difficulty for this video recording, or one of the disadvantages of the video recording, is it can be considered intrusive, uh, which means unexpected behavior by students and teachers, um, and uh, also how to transcribe uh, body movements, act actions, and so forth. The, the third principle or the third choice uh, in uh, recording is uh, observation. Okay, what do we mean by observation here? Observation uh, is uh, actually a quick and easy uh, it's quick and easy to organize, okay? So uh, it doesn't really uh, need a high, uh, it doesn't really need uh, a lot of time or uh, um, effort or endeavors to be uh, organized. And one of the difficulties that observers come across is that observers first need the training in the use of observation shaitu. And observers may not be able to record every detail. So here, the, uh, the main idea is that observers need to focus on one specific element and not to focus on, on all the details so as not to miss uh, each detail. And we're going to see that there is another approach, which is the narrative approach that focuses mainly on everything. So the observers, the observer needs to focus on every details and to record everything. And here, observation is specifically concerned with one detail or with one segment. Uh, which may be based by to record what they think they saw, not what really happened, and two observers cannot come with the same observation. In the observation, we know that we, when we talk about observation, we're talking about objectivity and subjectivity. So here, when the observer is trying to observe, to, to record what he sees, and what he notices, uh, and what he thinks it's liable like to happen, so here we're, to we're talking about subjective perspective about recording things, because he's trying to record from his own perspective, which is uh, called biased or subjective recording. And uh, this is actually one of the difficulty or deficiency of observation. And we come across solution, which is uh, we use focused observation, 
in me, which means observer focuses only, as I said before, on one detail. And uh, finally, the, the final principle or approach is a uh, narrative approach. Observer writes a descriptive. Okay, it has to do with narration, with uh, writing, with observing every detail and things happening either in the classroom or, or in other setting. Observer writes a descriptive account of the lesson as a narrative story. So here he's focusing on more details because he's trying to uh, like to uh, observe or to uh, write a descriptive uh, account of the lesson as a narrative or a story. One of the deficiency again or the disadvantages is difficulty, sorry there is a spelling mistake, the difficulty to write down every detail of what occurs in the classroom. So this is uh, this is actually an approach which uh, which is against the first one. Like uh, the first one focuses as what, what, what do we call the first one, the first approach that we have seen so far? Okay, audio. So here the narrative. No, it's not audio. It's observation. Observation uh, actually focuses. Yes, very good. Focuses on one specific element, but the narrative actually uh, needs to focus on all the details that happening in the classroom that the observer need to take into consideration. Now we have seen four choices or approaches of the, uh, of the uh, recording, which, which are, first, audio recordings, video recordings, observation, and finally, okay, narrative. Uh, now, there are some principles that uh, characterize or feature our approaches, which are ethical considerations. So there are some ethical considerations that need to be considered highly. Uh, first, uh, we need a written permission from all participants. I think that we have seen this before with the, in the, the course of uh, yes methodology. So we, there are some ethical uh, considerations that we need to uh, to have uh, importance or th that are that are of paramount importance in uh, recording. So first, we need a written permission for, from all participants whether they agree to be recorded or not, and uh, second, ensure, ensure uh, anonymity. Uh, third, parents' permission for kids, of course, if we are recording kids, so we need to take the permission for uh, their parents. And uh, number four, possibility to withdraw if not willing to be recorded. And there are some uh, considerable questions. Uh, okay, the second, before some questions, the second uh, idea is that how much data do we need exactly? So it depends on the purpose of the data, the objective of the data that we want to collect from the recordings, and also how it will be transcribed and transmitted to the, uh, the targeted audience. Uh, sound quality. Uh, here, sound, when we talk about sound quality, we uh, mainly talk about to have a sound quality means uh, we're talking about the choice of the room first. We need to find an adequate, convenient uh, place so that serves the purpose of recording. Uh, the use of carpets and curtains to reduce the echo, for instance, positioning of equipment, number of recorders, and selective recording. Okay, here, uh, role, here uh, there are actually a fundamental role of the observer. The observer, and here there are some questions that we need to uh, uh, to give importance to. Uh, okay, first, the relationship between the observer and the participant. Um, uh, is he uh, known? Is he an outsider? Uh, is he or she another teacher? Where to, uh, here, another question, for example, where to sit means where, the place where we when or where we arrange and manage the uh, sitting. And what the role to play? Is he just an observer or he's included or participant in the lesson itself? Uh, and uh, also the idea, we're talking about the idea of objectivity and subjective. It, I mean, the observation is uh, said to be objective or biased uh, itself. And thank you. Do you have any questions about uh, this before we progress? Before we proceed? Any question or something? So this, uh, I think it's uh, obvious, so uh, thank you for this. So now we move to the uh, next, okay. which is number two, okay, problems of transcription.
Okay? We can go about the table, our logistics. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. So, uh, let me first present uh, presenters of this presentation. So, it's me, Brian Mizgar, Mustafa Alma, Akli, and Khadija Gwen. Okay, so after we have seen the first. Uh, <laughs> yes, after we have seen the first technique or strategy used in order to investigate classroom discourse or classroom interactions, which is uh, recording. So the next step, which may be uh, logically follow, is the transcription of what of what was <coughs> recorded. So the outline goes like this in reaction. <laughs> difficulties of transcription, technical difficulties, and methodological difficulties. So starting first, there is a debate on how transcription may represent a reality accurately and faithfully as as possible. So, to what extent what what we, we transcribe or what we, we write uh, represents what was what was said in in a, in, in a conversation. Talking about video recording, and it was mentioned that video recording you can transcribe, of course, what the teacher the students are saying. But what about the movements? Yeah, the teacher, 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 we start first with the technical difficulties, and we can distinguish between uh, two subtypes. We have problem associated with actually hearing what was said. Are we able to transcribe everything that we 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 hear? Yeah. Yes, usually, but the problem here is that when we are recording, and when we are listening again to our recorder, what we have recorded, sometimes we don't get what is being said. That's why in the examples I show you. When we were talking about the classroom discourse, I will show you some extracts. The author or the investigator was saying not clear what was said. So this is how, and that's why you are mentioning in the previous presentation that the best way to deal with this is the language logistics, more than one microphone, etc. So we have, for example, eliminating the background noise, including finer nuances of spoken language. For example, when someone speaks, it just his, 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 his tone of the voice uh, has, it, it, it bears meaning, okay? It conveys meaning. How can we transcribe, for example? Yes. Uh, the second point is that technical difficulties at the level of representation. When, when we, we write, we write down what we, we have recorded. So, do we opt for broad transcript or narrow? Transcript. So a broad transcript captures the essence of what was said, the words themselves, or even their intended meaning. So we tend to only or simply record uh, what is what is important. It's a kind of, of gist, no, no details. Whereas for narrow transcripts, uh, <clears throat> for for the broad transcript, it ignores the fine details such as stressed syllab, syllab, a pause, a rising intonation of lapping speech, which is uh, the function of uh, narrow, narrow transcript. Now let's move to the second type of difficulties, which are met methodological difficulties. Yes, with Mustafa. Okay. Good morning, everyone. <coughs> so, uh, besides the... <coughs> Uh, the technical side, okay? There is also the methodological side, which can make uh, the job of the researchers more and more uh, challenging, okay? And by the uh, methodological decisions, we mean uh, the decisions that are made when the time uh, transcript is produced, okay? So these decisions, okay, are more likely to influence uh, uh, our understanding of a particular discourse uh, encounters. So the decisions we are trying to make uh, concerning the interaction 
that is taking place uh, in a very specific context, okay, can be very influential, uh, uh, I mean, regarding our understanding and interpretation uh, of the reality, I mean, uh, uh, the spoken uh, discourse, okay? So, <clears throat> and the examples of, of such methodological uh, difficulties or decisions include, okay, first, do I include the poses and how do I represent them, okay? How do I record particular gestures, facial expressions, body movement, okay? Uh, if so, how I can include them, or do I simply uh, ignore them? Then, what is the correct way to record emphatic speech, okay? Do I even need to record it? Then, do I organize the written text by turn-taking, okay, as some researchers do in conversation uh, conversational an uh, analysis, okay, or by linguistic uh, utterances. Then should intonation be included, okay? If so, again, how uh, I can record it, how I can include it. Then the last point, do I need to transcribe everything or even uh, anything? Okay. So, okay, so answering all such questions and making all such decisions, okay, uh, can make, okay, can, uh, can influence, okay, our, uh, uh, the transcription we make and the, trans uh, and the presentation of, of the spoken uh, uh, discourse and, and, and I mean, uh, may ha highly influence the, the results of, of, of our studies. So you see this point, is very crucial, okay. so if you include this style, for example, you have many options there, and if each option has got many uh, resulting interpretations because when you are recording the data and transcribing the data you are going to interpret the data analyze the data okay so if you include for example gesture special you might have some other interpretation different from if you don't yes so the decision you make okay influences your analysis and and the same, the same reality, the same event can be interpreted in different ways and, and, and understood in different ways by different researchers. That's it. Thank you very much. So that's the uh, end of this second. <coughs> So, any questions before we progress? Wait, please, as is. Transcription, transcription, you know, transcription. Yes, the phonetic, International Phonetic Alphabet, International Phonetic Alphabet Association, do you know? You, they have their, uh, created the list of symbols for all languages. Sometimes it might be applicable, some, some sounds are not represented in there, so you might need to make your own, and that's, you just need to specify this in the very beginning, after maybe the table of contents, or you provide a list of uh, okay, the symbols you are using for transcribing the data. This is part of the procedures for writing the thesis. So that's the... Okay, yes? Who's going to... Yes, another question? It depends on your objective. So what, what do you want to do? Of course, you will need to have to record the data and then to analyze that, uh, okay? Yeah. It depends. But if you are think you want to investigate uh, teaching reading skills or, you know, other things that have nothing to do, yeah. Yeah, so it, it depends on what you want to achieve, what you want to investigate, right? Yes? Any other? Good morning again. 
Uh, so I'm going to present interaction analysis approaches, system-based approaches. Well, in interaction analysis approaches, we have two types. We have system-based and we have ad hoc. Ad hoc is going to be tackled by our classmates. So the first part. Interaction analysis, abbreviation A -A -A IA, was the most popular means of analyzing uh, class interaction. So when we try to analyze classroom interaction, we use the interaction analysis uh, method. So one, it is one of the most uh, reliable quantita quantitative, quantitative instrument of analyzing interaction was through observation, coding system. So whenever we want to consider classroom interaction, one of the basic means that we use is observation instruments. From these recordings, the ones that have been tackled by our classmates, uh, and interaction analysis provides an objective and scientific analysis of the interaction. So the, uh, when you base your, your observation on recording, you tend to have to take everything that, that is taking place simultaneously during the, 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 the lesson. So there is a number of uh, observation instruments, according to Brown and Rogers, 2002. They suggest uh, that there, there are two, over than 200 observation Instruments. So, according to uh, I don't know how to spell the names. Shudron, I guess. Shudron, yes. 1988. Uh, he calculated, or she calculated, that there were 226 systems available for analyzing interaction in the classroom. What do we mean by two uh, uh, 26? System. It means a uh, system that they are, that are agreed upon. There is a general consensus about, about them. So, as you can see, as you can read in this part, uh, of the observation schedule used in interaction analysis have a number of features in common. That's why we can classify them. Excuse Unless you can see this. Is this a picture? Yes, it's a picture. Excuse me. Yes. Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> So it's going to be like that. So, okay, so you bear. Okay. okay. It's okay. Just read. You have. You will have to read that. Okay. okay. So I'm going to read it for you. Uh, they, they use some uh, system of ticking boxes, making marks, recording what the observer sees often at a regular time and in, uh, intervals. So. And this is uh, what we have in the observation instrument. You have ticking boxes. What uh, mainly what we have been, what we have seen with Professor Tan in the initiation training course. So they are considered reliable, enabling for, uh, of, of ease of comparison between observer and general. Uh, general <laughs> Sorry, I haven't had my breakfast. Uh, yeah, of results. So, uh, they are, uh, uh, since they are reliable and there are many common features between them, we can easily compare between them. So, because they, are, they have been agreed upon. The next point is they make assumptions about the ways in which classroom discourse progress, often a linear fashion that can be easily recorded. The, second, the last point, they are used extensively in teacher training, particularly for the developing competencies and raising awareness. These are the main features in common between them and the, uh, the, uh, not the, game, the goal behind them. So, as you can see, there are a lot of features in common between them. That's why they are agreed upon. The next point, observation instruments are divided according to whether they are system-based or ad hoc. It says, uh, in, in our part, we are going to focus on system-based. By system, we mean an instrument that has a number of fixed categories. As we have seen, the features that have been predetermined by extensive trial in different classroom contexts. So, advantage of using a fixed system. The system is already made, so you don't have to develop your own. There is no need for validation. Because they are 
already uh, agreed upon. They are like when you, when you talk about an exam, for instance, when you talk about an exam, you talk about the the, the, the TESOL exam. It's a kind of uh, once you get that diploma, it's something like valid. You don't have to question its reliability. They are uh, the same for observation tasks. Like we have something that is agreed upon. The the system is well known. Any system might be used in real time or following a recording. So you don't have to worry. Comparison between one system and another are possible. Comparisons. Understood? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to uh, give you an example. One of the earliest systems is put forward by Bilek et al. in 1966. It was based on the interaction of 15 teachers and 345 students. The instrument identified a number of pedagogical moves that could be categorized into common teaching cycles. So, according to what Bilek et al. have conducted, they agreed that the, 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 the instrument that they used, they could teach like it uh, at, uh, the, to categorize the common teaching uh, cycles. Like in every teaching, we have things that we should take into consideration, like in every classroom interaction. So, but like it also just three ex part exchange, solicit, respond, reaction, which represent, as you can see, initiation. The response and feedback. Okay. As you can see, can you see? No. I already read it for you. So, uh, the teacher. Okay. So, T stands for the teacher. <laughs> can you see? Yes. Okay. Uh, we are going to. Uh, the teacher initiates. So, this is a structure. So, we are going to look today at ways to improve your writing. That's, that's the structure. So the teacher initiates by saying, would you like to tell me one of the mistakes that you made? So this is solicit, according to Bilag. So this is initiation. The students ask, uh, says the type of the verb. So the, as a response to, to, the, to the solicit, the initiation. So the favor and the reaction of the teacher would be like, the verb, it means there is a problem with the verb. So that's the kind of interaction that you might have in class. You have teacher initiates, students react, and teacher gives feedback. Yes, that's the kind of interaction like you might have. So the system, this system, which stands for initiation response feedback, helps in understanding the process of classroom interaction. It also re reveals much about the ways instruments, uh, the ways these students and teachers communicate. So far, understood. Okay, the the initiation response feedback system is criticized because it might indicate that it's an overly teacher centric because it has to, it deals a lot with the teacher. It depends on the teacher initiating the the interaction. Are you following? Yes. Okay. So we have Casper. Casper says in 2001, he gave a counter argument against the initiation response feedback system, arguing that the learner can be more actively involved in teacher fronted classroom interaction. What does he mean? He said, in such environments, students are offered more participation right in the conversation. This is exactly what we are talking about in the first lecture. When I told you that, uh, we need to give more room to, for the to, students. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, Casper works suggests ways in which teachers facilitate learning involvement and uh, involvement in the interaction. So, the work of Bilak et al. was further advanced by Flander in 1970, whose FIAC, which stands system, which stands for Flander interaction analysis category. Categories. It's he assigned the classroom interaction to mainly uh, the teacher talk and student talk. So when it comes to the student uh, to the teacher talk, he identified what what is properly to be said by the teacher as. Yes. 
But then he's going to go into this initiation. Yes. What are the different types of, of Yes, that's exactly what it's talking about. And the same thing for the students. What are the different things that the students are doing in this kind of response? Yes. And give back as well. So we go into the details of each. Exactly. Yes. So uh, the teacher is likely to say, he is likely to accept feelings, praise or encourage, accept or use ideas of pupils, ask questions, lecture, give direction, criticize, use authority. These are the things that a teacher is likely to do or to, to perform during a classroom interaction. On the other part, this is also similar to what I said yesterday. Concerning the sequences, you remember when I talked about the different types of sequences? When I told you when I was saying that sometimes the teacher can be involved in simply informing, lecturing, like yes. I was doing it. So that's, uh, that's the same. But it's in a different way. Okay, yes, he's talking in terms of sequences, but here he's talking about the functions. So, so I'll, yes, thank you. Thank you. So on the other part, the teacher's the people's talk is going to be a response or initiation. That's it for our part. Thank you. So time now for some silence. <laughs> silence. Yes, please. Okay, good morning, everybody. Okay, the, uh, this part of our, pre our presentation is prepared by Mustafa Abul Hassan and Omar Taqayuddin and me. And uh, I will continue, uh, or I will pick it up where uh, Yunus left it. He talks about nine points, and I'm going to talk about uh, another point that is the tenth. Most of the time, in the interaction in the classroom, we have a student talk and teacher's talk. But sometimes we find that there is silence. Uh, periods of silence or confusion. Sometimes there is a teacher talk and the students talk, and you might find a silence. If students, for example, don't understand the initiation of the teacher, they may not respond. There is uh, some silence there. And uh, I'm going to also to talk about system-based. No matter how famous it was and how hard it works for us to analyze the classroom interactions, it is criticized and there are a lot of limitations addressed to this uh, uh, approach. System-based approach is an instrument that attempts to offer a finer grained classification of classroom discourse. As we said, it, it was famous, it uh, tries to analyze classroom interaction, but still, it is criticized. Also, it was finer grained, it was focused Yes. use observation, system-based, and then it's focused on categories, etc. I would say uh, one of the limitations is that they said it is broad and questionable instrument, why? Because we, we, uh, they say that it cannot account for uh, complex classroom interactions, and they say also that uh, they, they, as, uh, they work on the assumption that classroom interactions progresses in a neat and organized manner, and it's not always the case. Sometimes we may find that the classroom, in, in the, the classroom interaction is not organized. There may be a certain overlap, teacher is talking and students also are talking at the same time. And, that, and uh, for this, uh, since there are a lot of uh, critics, uh, critics and limitations, there are other instruments suggested. For example, we have uh, the cult. It is suggested by Alain and et al. It is called communicative orientation to language teaching. And this one is divided into two, either to focus on the part A or the part B. For example, in the part A, they may just focus on organization, on classroom organizations and ta tasks, for example, and the materials. Or they, if they uh, are to observe, for example, part B, they can go, uh, observe, for example, verbal interactions in the classroom, students' interaction, teachers' interaction, and the teacher, for example, the quantity of the use of display questions, referential questions, and, and other points. And there are some limitations of the system-based approach. They say that it's ethic rather than emic. For example, it's ethic because it uh, 
it focuses only on the on the observations interpretations there's no consultation of the of the feelings of the participants themselves the teacher and the student there are no questions questionnaires for example ask them about their feelings of the classroom interactions for example and their points of view about classroom interactions uh, the other limitations that reliability and validity are at risk why because if the same event if the same classroom interaction is observed by another person they may come up with other results that's why they say that reliability is at risk no allowance for overlap they say that uh, because this system-based approach believes that the classroom interaction progresses in a, uh, in a sequential manner. For example, teachers talk and then students talk. Students, for example, and teachers, but sometimes there may be an overlap. They, they are going to talk at the same time, for example. And that's why they present another, another approach, that's an ad hoc approach. In contrast to system-based interaction analysis, ad hoc approaches offer the con the construction of more flexible instrument. Why? Because we said that the first one is fixed, but this one is flexible. It is based on a specific classroom problem or area of interest. The first one, they study the classroom interaction broadly, but this one, it uh, addresses only a specific problem or specific area of interest. Those where there is overlapping yes, we, yes. And there are a lot of advantages uh, of these uh, ad hoc approaches. For example, the first one is participants are given insight into the issues and their investigation. We say in the first one that it's ethic rather than image, but this one they give uh, opportunity also to, to participants to, to give their insight issues under the, 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 under the issue under investigation. It saves time. Why? Because, for example, if we focus on details, we are going to understand a problem, at, but uh, that may cost us a lot of time, for example, uh, experiences in class to, us to understand a certain problem. But with this approach, just if we focus on certain details, we are going to, uh, to save time and understand that issue. Ad hoc system enables the observers to focus on the microcosms of interaction. Why? Because we say that it's specific. It addresses the details. Yes, it's special case, and the, uh, I like the first one that is broadly, and it may miss this microcosms. That's for our, our part, and thank you. Well, you can see how things are developing, right? First of all, uh, the first one is uh, the first one is nothing happens. So uh, they they focus on on a microcosm, and then tend to ignore those special cases of overlapping where there are difficulties, etc. And now moving into more focus into the microcosms of interaction, right? So we uh, continue with the next. Okay, I think it's this course, analysis, approaches. We go to the another point in our presentation, which, which is called uh, discourse analysis approaches. Uh, discourse analysis is the study of spoken or written texts. It, its focus is on words and utterances above the level of sentence, and its aim, uh, its main aim, is to look at uh, the ways in which words and phrases function in in the context. And here we have an example. For example, um, that if the teacher uh, says. Uh, the sentence like the window uh, uh, is open, so here uh, he he may uh, mean that uh, uh, my, the the function of this sentence may be, for example, the the request. So he he can say that the window is open, which means please uh, close the the window. And also, it can be an explanation, which is uh, the window is open, which is uh, it's uh, it's cold. Okay. And uh, it's, it can be a drill. For example, when he says that the window is open, students may say also the window is uh, open. And also can be a definition, uh, the window is open, and so he may uh, uh, show the, how it, how, how, what, what does open uh, mean. 
And uh, here we have a discourse hierarchy. Okay, we have, we have five components. As we can see here, um, the act is the smallest uh, discourse unit, whereas the, the lesson is uh, the, the largest one. Okay, and, uh, the tr and uh, between uh, those uh, components, we have transactions. So there are many transactions within the, the lesson. And we have exchange, which is mainly compo composed of the, the, the I, uh, IRF uh, uh, structure which is initiation, um, response, and feedback. And we've seen that with our professor in the last course, which is in, in the exchange, we have a, a, a circle between the teacher and, uh, and students. We can have, yes, cycle. And we have uh, an exchange between the teacher and the students, the students, and the, between the students themselves. And uh, we have uh, the MOVE, which is also composed of uh, two or more acts, speech acts, okay? And here we have acts which, is mainly has, which has to do mainly with, with function, okay? And we have some criticism uh, concerning these approaches. The first one is that um, discourse analysis approaches fail to take account of the more suitable, su subtle forces at work, such as role relations, context, and sociolinguistic norms that have to be uh, obeyed. You, you, do you understand this? Okay. Also, discourse uh, analysis treatment fail to adequately account for the dynamic nature of classroom interaction and the fact that it is socially constructed by its participants. So there is a problem with uh, interaction. Uh, finally, discourse approaches uh, do not adequately account for the range of context in operation in a lesson and for the link between pedagogical purposes and language use. And we have seen that with the, the previous, uh, previous items with, uh, with our colleagues. Uh, finally, as you see, our chapter is uh, very short and sweet. <laughs> discourse analysis approaches are both descriptive, uh, a part of it, yes. And uh, so descriptive and uh, perspectives, uh, prescriptive and attempt to categorize naturally occurring patterns of interaction and account for uh, them by a reference to a discourse hierarchy. Thank you. So there are two things here to remember. First, the fact that we move and go into the direction of systemic functional linguistics, okay, pragmatic systemic functional linguistics in the sense that uh, the utterances can have different meanings depending on the intention, depending on the context, depending on the many variables in there, right? So this is one thing. And the next one is the uh, categorization of classroom discourse. A new framework for categorizing the structure of classroom discourse. And so far we have just focused on one kind of, cate one category in that structure, which is exchange. But now you can see that there are there is a hierarchy from the very lesson and then moving into the okay, uh, ex transaction and then into exchange and then into a move and then into very simple acts. Okay, open the book, close the book, so directives. Okay, so this is the, the, these are the two uh, main things to bear in mind concerning applying uh, discourse analysis approaches to uh, classroom discourse. Okay. Now the next one, which is the last, I suppose, who is going to make to make it? Okay. It's conversation analysis approaches. As, uh, I'm obsessed with uh, warm-up activity. This is not actually, you know, I don't know how to call it. I don't know. We need to look for a new term in language teaching. Warm-ups, 
you know, normally occur at the beginning of a lesson, but this one is in almost the end of the lesson. It's not close. These times, you know, these times you need to know which every minute. Yeah. <laughs> so let us let us call it a pause, okay? It's <coughs> part of the twenty first century skills for teachers. Yeah. yeah. Warm ups. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, so I'd like you to imagine, just uh, imagine that your house or my house or any house <laughs> were actually were burning. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 just, just imagine, guys. No, I love that. <laughs> the one event, okay, is also included. Uh, we're burning. When you ask to save, you to only to take three objects, okay? So I'd like you all to speak, say, I would save this and this and this. Only three. Don't include people. Uh, I'm talking about objects, okay? So I would save this, this and this. That's enough. So it's going to start. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going to save my objects. Good, yeah, yeah. I'm going to save my house. No, 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 people are not included, guys. Okay, first I'm going to say... Okay, I'd like to say, please, it's a way of introducing conditional type to I would... Yes, I would, come on, I would take... I'm going to say my little cat. I would say... Yeah, I would say my little cat. Okay, I would say my little cat. My phone and my identity card. Great. So we were paid. So anyway, let's go ahead. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, my laptop. Alright, that's fine. I don't have my laptop. <laughs> 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 my car. Your car. <laughs> what about the little, you know? <coughs> uh, I would say my pet and uh, my mobile phone and then my. I can save my scooter and my 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 I don't uh, mobile phone. It's a stupid phone. I won't save it, so I would save <laughs> laptop. 
that's all. That's all I can say. Thank you so much. That's it. So let's move to uh, some slides about compensation analysis approaches done by these people in front of you. And so only uh, this approach, conversation analysis, is, uh, has some assumptions actually. And uh, they view language as, uh, we, with reference to its function. Uh, language is a means of social interaction. Clear. Social contexts are not static. Okay? They keep changing. They constantly change as they are formed by participants through the use of a lang of language. Uh, interaction is context-shaped and context-renewing. That is to say, one contribution is dependent on a previous one. And subsequent contributions create a new context for a new one. The same. This happens in all conversations that people, you know, uh, people experience and undergo, etc. Then how, this, how does this work in the classroom? I'd like you quickly to look at this one, just a few seconds. Do your best. Okay, it's actually the same as you see. Teacher said uh, what means equal means pause. What do we what do we call? I'm going to try and get the class to tell to tell you what this word is that you are looking for. We talk about military, you know, clubs, hands. Military what? Then learner one pause like fight. Okay, no, no. The teacher is trying to elicit. Say so like fight. Kill. No, no, no. Kill. Action. Action means it's trying to elicit one word at the end. Okay. And L, uh, the, the learner's action, no. Military, power, okay, LL power, uh, power, think of another word, military, uh, force, LL, okay, I see. T, so he believes in force, four, okay, that the guy, the, that guy, though, lies, then, etc. You know, as you see here, one utterance leads to the next. Yeah. The next, the same. The same in the classroom. So this is, uh, re, re, let's recap on this. In, this. in the extract tool, every term is uniquely linked to the previous and the following, which gives us a coherent piece of this group. The whole activity is goal-oriented, eliciting the word force, all of it. It leads to one word, which is uh, the word force. Uh, good. Uh, just uh, let me involve you guys, if possible. So, if you look at the ordinary conversation that we have in in you know, in the real life, and those we have in the institutional means institution environments, so classroom, for example, is there any any discrepancy between conversation that we have in the class, like teacher trying to elicit uh, a certain <laughs> word or? Uh, concept check here or, or something like this. And can you compare this conversation to those people you know uh, do outside the classrooms, etc.? Yes? I think there's a difference in terms of, especially in terms of initiation. Mm -hmm. In the classroom, it's uh, always the teacher uh, who initiates the interaction, whereas uh, in daily conversations outside the classroom, uh, all people uh, can initiate. Yeah, anyone has a chance to, to, to start. That's fine. Good. Yeah. Uh, Good. Just in the classroom, the conversation is more controlled. Okay? Good. While in, in, in outside the classroom, it's more, it's more natural. Natural. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Good. For example, in the natural conversation, the teacher is the one who is Is it in the classroom? No. 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 
guys. That's fine. I agree. Yes, please. Uh, only the teacher initiates uh, the interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, students also may initiate by asking questions. It's uh, just better to uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, all your, what I said, guys, so far is relevant. Let me just add, hopefully, new, new, new ideas about. So, ordinary spoken interaction and institutional discourse have many things in common. One, uh, just one here, which is the goals and of the goals of and actions of participants are linked. Okay. The same goal, the same you know, actions of participants, the same people interact, people have different have goals, the same in, in the classroom and in the real world, etc. However, in L2 classroom discourse, uh, the L2 classroom discourse is restricted, as you said, term, term management and topic management, etc. Usually the topic is usually selected, that's why students are rarely mean start, where the teacher means. Uh, Starts the conversation, then also turn. So it is guided, controlled. Okay, since it has an, it has an, and it has an objective. As you see in the previous one, the teacher is trying to guide it to elicit the word uh, force. Sequential organization, the the way it is sequenced. Okay, and choice of lexes, okay, selected and uh, are determined by the role of uh, in interacting. Teachers in. <coughs> In the L2, in the M2, L2 classrooms, there are, so teachers are considered experts, okay? And learners are non specialists, so they abide by the teachers' instructions, etc. Then, roles of uh, conversation analysis. The most significant role of, uh, of CA is interpretation data rather than imposing predetermined structural and functional categories. So, it is just interpret what you observe, take the data, analyze it, and give the findings, okay? It offers answers to questions related to teaching and learning. Targets one fell related just to teaching and learning and uh, answer these questions. But in the, ex in the, 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 no, that synopsis, the, that summary we, we read yesterday didn't explain well exactly. It, it, it provides also insights that, <clears throat> that may inform the actions of the practitioners this will be explained with the following. It reveals how teachers create opportunities for learning in the interactions or restricted. Then uh, discourse of L2 and uh, <clears throat> the two symbols means are not, okay, is not, sorry, and uh, is, okay, it, uh, conversation. Means conversation mean, uh, is it, do they look like conversation or not, okay? Yes and no. L2 classroom discourse does not and should not be interpreted as fully resembling a conversation. Is it like conversation? Yes and no. Yet, they have many things in common. For example, you know, conversation in the, in the real world was in the classroom, or, you know, they have uh, many things in common, as I said. Two way, okay, and entails turn taking, turn passing. Third season, then other features like false starts, hesitations, errors, and silence, etc. Is it clear? And uh, it's not okay. It they are not the same because I said they are controlled, guided, and you know we have uh, teachers as specialists. The others are not specialists. Yeah. Then uh, features of. Of CA approach to analyzing L2 interaction. The aim, the objective of CA is to account for a structural organization of the interaction as determined by participants. The approach is strictly empirical, okay, as it is focuses on as it focuses on patterns emerging from the data. Okay. 
then the observer is seen as a member of the interaction, trying to view the experience through the eyes of participants. I think these, these slides speak for, speak for themselves, I think. Context is dynamic. Uh, a kind of just repetition. Context is dynamic, mutually constructed by participants. Talk is seen in an institutional setting as being goal-oriented, okay, as we said before. The analysis of data is multi-layered, emphasis on both context and sequ sequentiality of utterances. <coughs> Limitations. Uh, CA is a bitterly criticized for two reasons, okay? Selectivity. Let me read this from the other guys. Uh, <clears throat> selectivity, so some, some researchers criticize CA for being over-selective, uh, which means snatches of discourse and their ensuing commentaries may appear to have been selected randomly with uh, no attempt to evaluate the significance of the discourse as a whole. They just they take the discourse, the data, and they try to select part of it. When they generalize it, doesn't you know it affects the validity of the results? So what I mean, uh, and uh, based on the on the idea that the uh, the context is you know they do vary from class to class. Is what I mean. That's what the way. It is. And also the inability to, to generalize the findings because they focus on one specific and every narrow context. And thank you guys. <laughs> So this is a kind of, uh, you know, very concise snapshots of different approaches. So hopefully you read more about that. Okay, uh, at home.